Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. I am Chelsea. You know that. I know that. So let's go ahead and get into the video. So I snuck in to a beach body call and took five pages of notes and we are going to now watch it together and react to it. Y'all know I typically don't like watch stuff before I make a video about it, but I was like, oh, I guess I should, you know, kind of start doing that so that I can make better, <laughs> better content and make sure it's like actually worth it. You know, just like being good at my job, essentially. Um, anyways, yeah, so I have like five pages of notes here and it is, it's quite cringy and I don't do too many videos about Beachbody, so I wanted to obviously do one. Uh, Beachbody is a multi-level marketing company, obviously, where they sell like fitness workouts and programs and um, Shakeology. And essentially you sign up and you're a coach. A coach of what? I don't know, I guess you decide. It's um, obnoxious, annoying, and uh, very dangerous. Uh, if you would like more information about Beachbody, Deanna Mims, another YouTuber, has done a lot of content about it. She was actually in Beachbody. Yeah, a round of applause for Deanna. Yeah! Okay, stop. Um, so she was in Beachbody and she was in like the top two percent i believe and i uh, actually lost money so, <laughs> so not laughing at you deanna i'm very sorry all right so let's um let's watch this video all right so i'm gonna put the speed on 1.25 because they talk so gosh dang slow and uh okay let's go I will, like, I will jack this up. I was terrified, I was terrified that everyone, everyone was doing PowerPoint presentations would give me extreme anxiety. anxiety. So, this so this is what you guys are getting. And I will show you how to be successful by not having any clue on what to do in life. So that's what you're coming to this call for. So I'm super excited. I'm super hyped. I was going back and forth on different topics of what I can bring value from, what I can really pour into you guys, you guys take away from this. And I was going back to myself as a baby coach. And I came into this with full reservations. I wanted nothing to do with each body name. I wanted nothing to do with anything of it. I it. The self-deprecation is really weird. I don't have that in my notes, but the self-deprecation is real, real weird. And it's a, I wouldn't really say a sales tactic, but a tactic to try to essentially and a manipulation tactic to try to get people to like, if you're dumbing yourself down or speaking poorly about yourself and you're like, well, I don't know what to do. And I, I didn't even want to be on this call. And oh my gosh, and blah, blah, blah. Then people who don't know how to do a PowerPoint presentation, or maybe don't know how to do, you know, anything in this type of company or don't know how to recruit people or do social media people who maybe are feeling less than and like they're essentially not qualified to be successful in a multi-level marketing company then they're like oh she's just like me but she's not she's not just like you um but throughout this entire call she does a lot of self-deprecating which i listen i love me some good self-deprecating humor i love that for me i'm also a pretty confident person though so i feel like it's like okay that i do that quite a bit um, yeah, so there's that. And then also, again, the, the, I wanted nothing to do with Beachbody. I wanted nothing to do with this company. Who, like, as someone who works for the, that company now, like, that's a weird thing to say. Imagine you're at work and someone says something like that. And they're like, yeah, I wanted, I did not want to work here. I, I wanted nothing to do with it. I hated this company. And it's like, geez, why? What? That's weird. That's a, that's a red flag to do with anything of it. I w it was such an ick factor to me. And it was one of those things though that was always in the back of my head because I would see all these happy people and I was not a happy person. And they were bebopping around on the internet and they just made me angry. But then I secretly wanted to be them, right? I was a angry person. I was a jealous person. I saw all these beach body coaches. They were so happy and living their life on the internet. And I was just an unhappy person and I was just jealous. So people who were unhappy are jealous haters or people who don't agree with it or don't like network marketing or don't like Beachbody are unhappy, jealous, broke haters who hate their lives and who are miserable. Got it. I, lo I, really, I really love that one. That one's really good. And so for me, I, thinking back to that person that joined, didn't have any training, came in as a wanting to build this massive business, had absolutely no idea how to do it. I had a very challenger mentality. I also didn't understand when people would talk about vision and when they talk about what your why is. Like, I'm like, that's too deep for me. I am a surface level gal. I don't know how to go that deep. I don't do vision boards. Like that type of stuff gives me anxiety, all the things. And so I was thinking of you guys. And I'm like, for me, it's creating a bulletproof plan. It's figuring out and getting down to the nitty gritty of what fires you up because we're all different. And you hear so many people. It, it is weird that she's like setting the bar so low and she's like, 
you don't have to know how to do a PowerPoint or a Zoom and record a Zoom. It's like to be successful. It's like I, f I feel like I mean, yeah, sure. Those aren't like the keys to success, but I feel like you should maybe learn some of those things because essentially, yeah, they are parts of your job. It's not like in your job description, but yeah, it's it's parts of your job. So why wouldn't I don't know. It's so dumb. We'll do this cookie cutter approach to this business. And sometimes you get someone that will remind you, you don't have to know how to do a PowerPoint zoom into a Facebook group or how to record a zoom. And you can still be very successful in this business fail forward. And that's the one thing that I will share with you guys that what's beautiful about this business, besides the million and two things of why I'm obsessed with it is we're independent earners, but we collectively make this business badass, like point blank period. And what I mean by that is I myself am fueled by fear. I'm fueled by doubt. If someone doubts me, it doesn't put me back or make me nervous. I am like, watch what I'm about to do. And that's literally what's catapulted my business. Every step of the way is somebody doubting me. Is someone putting fear in me and me wanting to prove them wrong? That's not the greatest like little splice of motivation, but that's what fires me up. That's what motivates me. And so I'm here tonight to kind of figure out what's going to motivate you and push you. Okay. So let's get to it. So the first thing, hold on, let me get to my notes app. The first thing is this, another note of why I came to this topic. Let's go back to where we don't care to talk about anymore. 2020 was that year of like, is going on, right? 2021 came into this like year of like, all right, this got to end at some point. We got to go back to normal. And we all got like white straight jackets. And we were like, I don't know what is happening in life. And we are drowning. And we, we embraced the not, or it's okay to not be okay. I'm rolling into 2022 being like, it's okay to not be okay, but it is not okay to stay here anymore. Because guess what? We have settled into 2020, 2022. We are, we are, this is where we're at now. So at this point in time, I'm tired. And I can say this because I, you're not, a majority of you are not my coaches. So you aren't going to get butt hurt about this. I can say this to you guys as someone who cares about your success and is not directly aligned with you, that I don't want you playing small anymore. I don't want you being okay with not being okay. I don't want you setting small goals because it's scary to set big goals. I want you to get hungry. I want you to I have the questions. I have so many questions. So like, yeah, it's okay to not be okay. Absolutely. Yes, for sure. It, this is just so weird. <laughs> this is so weird that like she, she contradicts herself like multiple times, but in like, like in like a roundabout way, like she's saying that it's okay to, you know, not be okay. And it's fine to, you know, say that, but it's, you know, you got to move on or whatever. And it's like, all right, girl, do you realize that like most of the issues and problems that we are, f what is happening with this little loop um, that we are facing right now as a human race or even in our, in our country in the U S like a lot of it is outside of our control, our economy, a bunch of other shit happening. Like, it's not just like, yes, Schmovid like catapulted us into like, that was the straw that broke the camel's back, whatever. And then like net our economy is attempting to recover, but it's essentially imploding, you know, due to COVID due to st giving out stimulus checks due to supply chain issues and like uh, it's not just one thing it's like seven different things that happened because this one thing happened and then you know continuing and continuing and it's just really frustrating that she's like well COVID did this and blah blah well it's the next year get over it it's like what girl are you okay Essentially, what I think she's trying to say is that you can't use like we're in a pandemic as an excuse anymore, which sure, but or like we're in a recession or like the world's crazy or my mental health or whatever. You can't use that as an excuse. And this business is going to like solve essentially like all of your problems. You just have to do it. And it's like, that's not that's not necessarily true or attainable or sustainable as we've learned. I want you to get hungry. I want you to show yourself what's possible. I want you to build the lives that you deserve. And I want you to stop saying it's okay to not be okay. It is, but we don't want to stay there. We have the opportunity for growth. You have the opportunity to become anything you want to be. So weird that she just said that again. Like, it's okay to not be okay, but we're not going to stay there. Well, yeah, no. We're not saying we're going to stay there for, we are not saying we're going to stay there forever. The saying is like, it's okay that stuff's messed up. It's out of your control. The craziness that's happening, it's out of your control. We just got to get through it, okay? Like, that's what it's okay to not be okay. That's what that essentially means, or at least that's how I take it. Leave in the comments below, how do you take it? Entire world through this business. And that sounds very like rah, rah, and very like whatever. And it's like eye roller if you're a new person in here, but coming from somebody who was the biggest skeptic ever, who doubted everything that this business could ever possibly do, stepping foot and making the decision to be a coach and stepping foot into being the person that's never gonna give anyone validation that this doesn't work because I chose not to work. 
This business works when you work. This business doesn't work when you choose not to work. And any time that any coach decides that they're going to be a fair weather coach where they start coaching and then they peace out because it gets hard, loses validation to all of anybody who's following me that this is going to work. And I'm not going to allow any of you to make that decision because we're all going to lean in, link arms and do this damn thing together, blow shit up. We're going to see each other. I hope I can swear in here. I don't, oh, I didn't even know if I can. If not, disclaimer all over this, but we're going to link arms. I'm excited to see you guys at Summit and you come up to me and you say, this call was a defining moment. This is what I did since this call. That's like my, that's like my biggest motivator right now is you guys getting off here being like, I did something because of this call. So first thing I want you to do is I want you to text message whoever right now you're taking time away from, whether it's family, whether it's friend, whether it's your Netflix account, email them, I don't care, but send a message to whoever you're taking the time away from right now and thank them for honoring that this call is so important to you because this is what you're planning on doing with the business. This is why I'm saying this because my husband, who's like, like we call him the silent supporter because the homeboy would never be like, I'm proud of you. Like it just doesn't come out of his mouth. I never included him in the business. I was very spiteful in the way I grew this business. And I was very like, watch what I'm about to do. You just wait and see what I'm about to do. He had no idea why I was asking him to do bath time. He had no idea why I was saying, hey, I'm going to be out of town for three days. He had no idea what my game plan was behind this other than me tapping out and needing him to help. When you start including them in, even at a surface level, just simply saying, hey, thanks. My husband would have lost his mind if I would have sent him a text message. He was like, thank you for letting me get on this call. This is what I want to do with this and blah, blah, blah. He'd be like, yeah, okay. But you know what? It plants a seed in their head to know and she just we're gonna circle back in a second but she just said he would have lost his mind if i would have texted him and said thank you he would have been like yeah okay that's not losing your mind ma'am now this might sound like all raw raw and motivational and the best call ever however it's obviously not and i am just breaking down of course i don't even know why i'm doing this little disclaimer just breaking down this manipulation for you so essentially her saying and of course just how i'm interpreting it fair weather coach you can't be a fair weather coach essentially saying if you just come in and then quit and leave like that's that is how you will fail it's the only way you're ever going to fail is if you just quit um so don't consider yourself a fair weather coach like you have to be all in and then is the part that i love oh i love that she said this in like a gross way so she said text the people that you're taking time away from so that is like such Ugh, that's such a different side of the sunk cost fallacy because it's not only like, okay, well, I've put so much money into this, so I'm just going to keep going or I've wasted so much time already. I'm just going to keep going. It's also, I've put so much out there already <laughs> on social media. Like I told so many people I was going to do this. And now what do I do? Like, I don't want to be embarrassed. Like, I guess I got to just keep doing it. Just stay in it. Try to prove them wrong, try to be successful, tricks on you, you're most likely not going to be in that MLM or in that um, industry at all. Yeah, gross. Um, yeah, I don't I don't like that she said that like that's literally just a way for you to keep yourself accountable, but to embarrass yourself like text your what it's I don't like it. I don't like it give you that extra bit of um, pressure. In yourself because you just put yourself out there to probably the most important person in your life and you are not going to fail we're okay with letting ourselves down which we're going to change that narrative but sometimes doing that in front of somebody else feels a lot heavier and so you're going to show up even bigger so do that take that time and do that okay next i want to ask you two questions and we're going to reset to this at the end of it but this is something that i ask myself every single day and the days that i aren't that i aren't that i'm not asking myself are also typically the days that i find myself backseating the business where i'm sitting where i'm kind of coasting where i'm just playing along with it are you the coach you'd enroll with are you the coach you'd sign up with today and then not just be like, yes, of course, because I'm in it and I love it. Blah, blah. Why? Why are you the coach you'd enroll with? And like, this is one of those things I hate when people are like, write this down, write it down. Because this is something I literally ask myself every day. Are you the coach that you'd enroll with? The second one, are you the coach you'd want on your team? If we duplicated you, which you are able to do in this business, which is like the killer thing of all time. If we duplicated you, what would your business look like? If we duplicated you 15 times, would you, have be, would you be a superstar diamond? Would you have a flourishing business? Would you have the most like badass, like team culture of all time? Because there's 15 of you on their team. So those are the two questions. And then we're going to go back to that later. Now, let, if you've ever been on a call with me, you've heard me say this before. Let's define. The fact that she just said, and we, you can duplicate yourself here. Ma'am, you're, no, you're working out. You're not in the business of cloning. Y'all cloning people over there. You can duplicate yourself. You can duplicate yourself. It's just like on Jesse Lee Ward's team in Prove It, The Empire. You look at a bunch of them and it's just a bunch of little Jesse Lee Wards. There's just so many of them. And it is so silly. And it's all the same. And then same with uh, another team that does it really bad is WFAB, the one that was in Monate and now is an iGenius. Because they're all just carbon copies of each other and they all just put up the same stuff over and over again. And it's like, why would someone follow you if you're posting the same sh 
Like, why? To gain a following. I mean, why do you, like, you for something different, you should post different stuff. You should be yourself and not just try to clone yourself or turn people into copies of you to try to grow a following or to try to entice more people to come. That's weird. Have you ever been on a call with me? You've heard me say this before. Let's define what type of coach you are. And this goes back to literally every different phase you are in this business. So whether you're a brand new coach or you're an OG coach, this is something that you can reassess where your mindset is in the business to kind of see why you're falling where you're falling. So one, the must be nice coach. The one that right now sees success. And we've all been through these phases. Let me just point blank that. Like I've been through these phases. Are you the must be nice coach? The one that if you're at summit, someone's walking across the stage and you're like, must be nice. Are you the person that's on this call that is hearing me speak? And you're like, superstar diamond must be nice. Y'all have no idea what my backstory was to get here. Are you that person that when you see somebody else getting shout out on the team page or hitting their goal or this, that, and the other, you're like, must be nice. Cause you are already putting an end point to your business. You're already giving yourself an exit strategy. Cause it must be nice to be somebody else. It's not you. Uh -uh, we're not playing that small. So we're going to navigate away from that. We're just, we're, we're, we're identifying if that's where your mindset is. And then we're moving forward. The next one is you're the cheerleader. You're that person that when someone says they have a goal or if someone gets accolades anywhere, you are all over that post and you are cheering on them and you are being like, this is amazing. And if your coach is like, I want to go elite or I want our team to go 15 star. And you're like, yes, it's amazing. I'm not going to have anything to do with getting there with you, but that's awesome. I'm gonna cheer you on the whole way. It's real weird that she's just like, must be nice. And then just went straight to, we're just going to address that you're like that. And then we're moving on. Well, why not? Like, <laughs> well, why not? It, why not actually address it? Why not ask that person? Why are you like that? There are a lot of people who will get in that. I was about to say mindset and I hate it. We'll have that type of thought process where, where they are constantly like, oh, well, must, the must be nice, right? And they will just think that things just come to people. And yeah, for some people, sure. I mean, there's nepotism. There's people who are just have everything handed to them, essentially. For instance, this is a great example. You want to know how frustrating it is. As a YouTuber, as an influencer, one, when someone asks you what you do and you say you do what you do, and they're like, oh, you make money doing that? And I'm like, yep. I'm like, oh, how much money do you make? Isn't that a weird question to ask someone? Like next time someone asks me, I'm just gonna say, well, how much money do you make? Like, that's weird. I don't know. I, I listen, I was brought up that it is weird and not like, not, not nice, but like just not proper etiquette and just essentially rude to be like, how much money do you make? Why the f*** that into your business? Get out of my bank account. Get out of my uterus. You don't need to know more having babies or how much money we make. No, thank you. I don't want anyone to know how much money I make. Get out of here. Uh, but anyways, um, when people like see things like that and then they're like, oh, well, how do you get paid? And of course, ev every influencer, every YouTuber gets it. Having to explain like, oh, well, like, you know, Google and AdSense and YouTube and advertisers, blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, ad reads and every YouTuber has had to have that conversation like 70 billion times. So then saying like, oh, well, blah, 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 blah. And then it's just, or like you get something for free or like you get to go to like a premiere or something, right? Or like a, even just like a pre-screening and having people be like, oh, must be nice. I want to start a YouTube channel. And it's like, do it, do it. Cause it's not easy. And I like, it's no, it's not easy. That would be like me saying, like if me saying that I'm, oh, I should get into insurance sales. That's we that's weird, right? I don't know, I just, thought of something random but that's weird oh well, I should become a realtor like just because one person has success doing something doesn't mean that you will but then also having that oh must be nice like stop being a bitter bitch and if do you want that okay make a plan figure it out do it is it actually attainable no okay then let's try to figure out how you can actually attain something keep it simple stupid Okay. Great advice hurts my feelings every time. That's what you got to do with your goals. Keep them simple, attainable, small. And sure, those tiny things might build up to one big thing. But, and we're going to talk about that later because she talks about like goals that terrify you. And it's like, what? That's a cheerleader, which you have to be a cheerleader in order to be a successful coach. But if you stay in cheerleader mode, that's all you're going to stay. And it's a beautiful thing. And it's an amazing piece to be a coach and to be a cheerleader because it's such a magnified spot in our business. But I, you're not just a cheerleader. You're not the sidelines. You got to be in the game, right? So then there's the CEO who's partially cheerleader and partially that person that when someone walks across the stage or somebody's getting accolades or someone's earned something, you say, that's awesome. Watch what I'm about to do. There's a little bit of competitiveness in you. And there's a ton of belief in yourself that you know that they just gave proof that it's possible. And so you're going to go make it happen too. That's the CEO of the business. That's the person that's going to grow the business. So identify where you are in this moment. And like I said, every single coach in this network has been through every single phase. But when you are going to see the growth, when you're going to feel the growth, when you're going to go after the growth is when you're in that CEO mindset of one, you are cheering on everyone possible. You're asking what they're doing to be successful. And then you're aligning with the right people. We are not aligning with the people who identify with the depressing memes. We are identifying with the inspirational quotes. Got it? And Ugh, that's weird. Sometimes stuff's just funny and relatable and that's okay. But then yeah, it's okay to look at like funny, positive stuff too. This is the most toxic positivity weirdness 
not weirdness, but just this is all toxic positivity. We're not gonna look at anything that is like depressing. Listen, your life sucked the past few years. Okay, oh well, get over it. We're gonna not stay in that mindset. We're gonna be positive. And it's like, oh, okay. Ignore your depression and rank up, essentially. Some of you are like, oh, I just shared like four of them on my like timeline. Like, oh, that and the fettuccine Alfredo recipe. But I haven't posted anything about the business. We're gonna change that tonight, okay? So the next one, we're gonna identify how you're showing up to your business as a CEO, or a convenience volunteer. And some of you are like, oh yeah, when it's convenient, you show up. When you got time, you show up. When that like little three-day window in your schedule breaks and you can show up. Or are you a CEO where you make the time? You create the time. You make sure there's the time because this business is what's going to create time down the line. So again, identify, look within yourself, give yourself a solid gut check on where you're at right now in your business and, and where you wanna go, okay? Next one. Here's a couple little gut check moments for you. Here's the thing. She just said that CEO mindset, the toxic positivity essentially, is the thing that creates time down the line. Down the line, down the line? Hmm. But when, when, at what rank, how long do you have to do this? Because there are Beachbody coaches who have been in the company for so long and been at the top for so long, but they're still working. They're still recruiting people. And that's what happens with an MLM. You have to continuously recruit people because other people are falling off and you have to continuously get on calls and motivate people and all this stuff. But it's just so strange because they act like, well, this is what sets you up for your future. You've been saying that for 10 years. When does your future happen? Unless you're part of the top... 0.001%, then you're going to have to keep working at this for the rest of your life, like so much. And search your name. How often do you come up? What type of comments are you leaving? Are you being strictly the cheerleader? Are you sharing value? Are you talking about what's working? Are you the person that said, I really want to sign this person up, but they ghosted my conversation? Because I always say that if you have someone, and just let you know, I'm look, I feed off energy. So if anyone's giving me RBF, I'm the queen of RBF unintentionally. Just I need like head nods and like fun because I'm gonna give you the energy. I'm gonna match it. So when I get some like excitement, like Christina Pryor, I, you're like front and center. So I'm just watching your face and I'm feeding off of it. So thank you. Um, but if you go on your team page, I always say if you're a brand new coach or you've been in the business for a hot minute and you invite another fellow coach into your team page and they search your name and it is complaint central or it is just negative vibe central, they're gonna be like, what the heck did I just do aligning with this person? Everything that comes out of your mouth is a thought, is a belief, and is something you're gonna believe, right? So make sure the stuff that's coming out of your mouth, the stuff that you're putting out into existence, especially in this business world, is positive, uplifting, badass, and has a growth mentality attached to it. So one, see how often you're showing up in your business and not just growth mentality. <laughs> yikes, yikes, big yikes your business. And not just when it's easy, not just when your business is booming, but when it's tough and you're willing to go out there looking for solutions for your issues. Okay. Next one. Are you going to summit? This is one of those, because a lot of you, probably a ton of you have signed up in the past two years and there was no summit. Summit is a game changer. Summit is one of those things I had signed up in the middle of May and summit was in July. And I was just told you don't want to walk into summit as an emerald. You want to get into this VIP diamond line. I'm like, no idea what that means, but just fill me in the bubbles and I'll make that happen. And I'll roll up in there. I nanny camped my husband because it's the first time I ever left my kids literally nanny cam. And he's like, why is this thing like robot, like following me around? I'm like, I didn't trust you. Nanny cam. First time I left my kids, didn't know what was happening, but I knew all I kept hearing for people was successful people in this. You gotta get summit. You gotta get summit. And I was fully prepared to going to summit and seeing like Carl on stage and like everybody being like beach body and it being this like chanty cult like situation. And I was like terrified of what I was getting into flew by myself, knew absolutely no one. Girl, that was your gut. That was your gut telling you not to go. It was your gut telling you that it is a cult. But you put on those rose-colored glasses. Like didn't have a team culture to be into. Like somebody actually asked me to share a room and I was like, no, nah, I'm not that type of girl. Like I, I want to poop alone. So I'm like, mm-mm. so I'm that type of person that took that risk because everyone told me it was important. They were like, if you want to grow a sustainable business, if you want to grow a business, you got to be at Summit. Okay. Going to Summit is crucial for your business. Summit is their convention every year, right? Like how Monate has Monations. Summit is for Beachbody. Now, want to know what really happens at Summit? Go watch uh, Deanna Mem's videos on that because she is wild over there. Um, Now, my question is, I'm looking down at my notes, sorry. My question is why? Why is going to a convention where none of your customers and none of your potential recruits are, which is how you make money for your business, why is going there crucial for your business? You're not going to make any sales there. You're not going to recruit anyone there. So why would that grow your business? Why would that be crucial? It's because Beachbody makes a fudge ton of money by you going and buying a ticket and going to all the like booths and shit and taking courses and classes and whatever. 
But like Hannah Alonzo and I talked about in our little live stream collab thing we did, they they get so much money from it. But more so than that, it reinvigorates you. It keeps you brainwashed. It makes you feel like, let's say you had a little inkling of like, I should get out, like I should leave. Absolutely not. Not after that. You're with all your friends. You're being love bombed. Like your passion for the business is reignited. And by that, I mean, you are further and further brainwashed. We'll go to Summit. All of a sudden, I got walked into Summit and I'm like, I belong here. These are my people. I've never felt so safe, so comfortable, so in place and where I deserved and needed to be than at Summit. So if you are not going to Summit, hey, too late. Get your ass to Summit. Okay, next one. Are you inviting people to go to Summit? So this is where we go into CEO mentality. If you're sitting at, oh, Christina just gave me that look like, oh, she called me out. Um, if you're sitting at that place where like you're going to Summit, you're like, I cannot wait to go to Summit. I cannot wait to be at Summit. I cannot wait to be around my team at Summit. But are you bringing anyone to Summit? You got to invite Summit because I can tell you, you could get some challenges. You get some people that have absolutely no idea about the business. They walk into Summit and all of a sudden that is something they don't want to not be a part of. So that gets you into that CEO mentality that you got to invite people into this business, that Summit is massive. So make sure you're going to Summit. Make sure you've got a crew going to Summit with you. Um, do you attend team calls? Y'all are good. You're here. But this is one of those things that I would go on your team page and I'll be like, oh my God, this team calls amazing. Everyone needs to be here and like blow that up. And then the FOMO, like we all feed off FOMO. So we're okay with that. Do you host team calls? Again, I was someone that I came into this business and my coach kind of went peace immediately. And so for me, I had no choice that I was either going to be like, I don't have any calls to get on. One, you have this call to invite to, which is pretty freaking amazing. Like I'm a little starstruck being on this call with people and like terrified of this call. You have this call but it's important to host your own calls. Back in grandma days, when I, I literally signed up seven years ago, but for some reason it feels very, very old. We didn't have like picture Zooms. We had like call-in Zooms and it would say like one person on. My very first coach like info call, I had one person on. She didn't know she was the only person. And I knew that it was coming time to the end. And I literally was like, okay, I'm so sorry. There's not time for questions, but feel free to shoot me messages. I know there's a bunch of you on and you have a bunch of questions and blah, blah, blah. And I got off and I was like, oh my God, thank God she didn't know that she was the only person on. But guess what? She reached back out to me. And now, now she knows the story. So it's funny. But it's one of those things that I... So just fake it till you make it. Just lie. And per usual, this is a great example of the like, I only have a few more spots left this month or, oh my gosh, look at this. Like omitting the truth or like slightly twisting the truth to market yourself and to try to make it look like, you know, it's FOMO and like you are in high demand when typically you are not. It's just like when the great example of this is... A lot of people, from what I have heard, and prove it, you know, they do like live streams where they're like packing people's trials. They'll just like fake that and like pack, like package up like fake orders essentially. And then after the live stream, and then after the live stream, they'll just like undo it and like put it back. And they're like wall of whatever it is, the powders and stuff. That's so sad. Like how... How do you sit there and do that? That has to make you question it. That has to make you doubt it. And that's so sad that those people don't get out. Things that I know now, I don't need a massive Zoom party to be a successful coach. I need a handful of people that show up to each call. I need not even, I need one person to show up each call because I know if I get one of you one on one, you can't escape my energy. You can't escape my passion for this business. You cannot escape me being like, girl, you don't have a choice. You're doing this with me because that's just how passionate I am and how much belief that I have. You don't need something massive at your fingertips. You need one person to help. If I got you one on one, you can't escape. You're never leaving. No. So when you first enrolled, so this is how I think, because I am not, thank you, Lauren, for laughing. Um, Cause like I'm feeding off her face too. I'm like terrified to look at anyone else's screen and it'd be like, <laughs> but we're rolling with this. Cause you guys, you guys on the main screen are all enjoying your life. So um, when you signed up again, when people would say, what's your why, what's your avatar, what's your niche market? What is your vision? What is your dream? I was like, that is way too spiritual for me. Like uh, that's, I, I don't get it. I, I want to give you an answer. I don't feel like it's going to be the right answer. And for my personality, it needs to be the right answer. And so I had to think about one, what would happen if I didn't show up? What would happen if I didn't keep going? I would, I would validate everyone. I would validate myself because I was a person that watched so many of my friends on Facebook, post a before and after, invite to a challenge group. And I would, I'd be that person. I wouldn't comment. I wouldn't like, I wouldn't support. I wouldn't nothing. I would just wait for them to never post again until that one person. Why? I'm fixing my eyelash. Why is someone asking you your why? Why is that too spiritual for you? That doesn't make any sense. I mean, you can have a why for anything. Like, why do you work out? Because I don't want to die. <laughs> I want to live and I want to be stronger. I want to, y'all, y'all ain't ready for like, listen, three years from now, hell, even a year from now, your girl, mm, I'm trying to be a little beefcake. Ugh. So that when I see these Monet girls and they try to tussle, they won't know what's what. Um, for legal purposes, that's a joke. I'm not trying to fight any Monet girls. What I'm hearing her say right now is that I need to do this the other way because I'm going to fuck this up. I have like two more videos to film today and ever. This is my third one. Hashtag hustle.
it's real frustrating to hear her say, like, if you stop, who are you letting down? And it's like, yourself, that's it. You're not letting anyone else down. Like, for not joining a cult, but it's the... It's this manipulation tactic. And hey, she might not even know that she's doing it. Someone could have done it to her. The thing is, is that how she's phrasing it is like, th this is the answer to all your problems. And if you don't work at this, and if you don't become successful with this, you're letting down everyone. How? No, you're not. No one, no one cares. If you're in beach, if you're on this team, if you're in Beachbody, if you're in an MLM and you think you're going to let people down by leaving that MLM, I will tell you right now, they don't care. They don't care. Get a normal job, you'll be fine. And by normal, I mean anything other than a pyramid scheme or than a multi-level marketing company. Shit, you could do freelancing. You could do something creative. You could get a certification. I don't know. You could do literally anything else. You could sell your feet pics. I have a few friends that do that on the side. Go for it. Get that money, honey. That ain't hurting nobody. Except for some, some guy's wallet. And he's consenting, so who cares? He asked for him. Now flip over and show those piggies. One person kept posting, then became successful, and I was like, oh, she proved it works. Crap. And then all of a sudden that validation clicked in my head. So think to yourself, when you first signed up, what were those things in your belly and in your gut that you were like, man, it'd be cool if this business took me here? Man, wouldn't it be cool if I became really successful and I was able to do this? And you started thinking about your dream life. And I want you guys to tap into this and your dream life being your everyday life, not the future, not the house, not the cars, not the, all the things that, and, and the, the fancy things. I want to talk about when you sit up, what does your room look like? What does your bed look like? What does your reflection look like? What does outside look like? What does your everyday look like? Are you driving to yoga? Are you going to get matcha? Are you going to get a massage? Do you have a packed schedule? Like what does your ideal day look like? and tap into that. Cause that's going to be more motivating than that far reach goal that you're working towards. You got to hit those everyday goals before you hit that far reach goal. So tap into that. When you first signed up, when you first decided like F it, I'm in, what was that driver? You had something in you that had belief in yourself, belief in the business and belief in what was possible in order for you to say yes. So tap into that. Even if you've already erased that, cause you're like, I need to it didn't work. You didn't. Cause every single day you get to make the choice to make this business work for yourself. So tap into her because she's, cause she's coming back. She's making a comeback. Okay. So let's go into big energy. Now, if I came on this call and I was like, yeah, so um, I'm a superstar diamond, which, no, I hate to even like saying that, but like, um, and I run challenge group, you'd be like, okay. But if I was like, dude, you have to do this business. It's going to freaking blow up. It's going to be the most amazing thing. All of a sudden you're like, I want whatever she's on. I was, if you guys have been watching my stories, I have the worst allergies known to man. I started talking this business and shit just cleared away because I get so hyped. And um, so be fake. I said it in a video uh, the other day and like, sure, I get on camera. I'm a little, I mean, y'all see, I'm not like all over the place. I am very comfortable on camera alone in my room or in my office, but I don't know. It just seems so like you always have to be on and go, go, go. And it's like, that's so exhausting. You don't have to be like that. You really don't have to, but notice how she just went from giving actual like proper expectations of what you're going to get. Oh, you're going to be in this challenge group and, you know, we help each other and we share stuff and um, you know, then if you meet this requirement or you can rank up and you can, you know, recruit people or invite people to join your team and blah, blah, blah. And you can run a team and you can have this or, oh, my God, you have to join. It's going to blow up and it's just going to be the best thing ever in your life. And it's like, yeah, calm down. OK, um, I don't think I already went past that part, but she said like energy, hype, energetic, all that. And it's just faking it like you can you can force yourself to be like energetic I mean I, I understand that but in regards to an MLM and having this persona and trying to like sell an opportunity a lifestyle a dream that's just real unethical and gross um also I made a little <laughs> I made a little list of my favorite buzzwords <laughs> and that's uh launch I thought that said lanch then it would say lanch party Kevin um niche niche down Mm -hmm. niche down, hype, feeling, feeding into it. I can't read my own handwriting. Feeding into it, mindset, feed your soul. Energy, show up, leaning in. Oh my God, leaning in. Oof, gross. I get so hyped and so energetic. Like my, my grandma literally told me I look like Quasimodo last night at this time because my face was so blown up. This business, not saying that this solves everything, but when I start getting excited, when I start getting hyped, like everything just goes away. And that's why I believe in this so much and I'm coming at you guys even harder because this is the first time in seven days I can breathe. So we're going to roll with that. Okay. Think about right now, what program makes you feel alive? 
what program have you committed to? Whether it's recent, whether it's fire, like what's your soulmate program? Like drop in the chat. Like, like get, I wish I could look at the chat, but the, like I might have to stay on here after to like read the chat because I love feeding into it, but I'll like squirrel it like real quick. But what is that program that taps into your soul that you love? Because the one thing that, and I truly believe that everyone needs to launch a program. Everyone needs to commit to a program. I wanted nothing to do with gut protocol. I literally, it was the very last second. And I called a dude. Cause I'm like, I don't need a girl to hype me up about gut protocol and tell me why I need to do it. I called a dude. And I was like, just tell me why I need to do this. She's like, he's like, you have to do it. You have to do it for your business. You have to do it for yourself. And I'm like, huh. drag my feet, did it. it became the most amazing thing ever. So that sounds like a riveting and very hyped conversation. So motivational. Why should I do this? You, you have to do it for your business. You have to, you have to do it. You have to, you have to do it for your business. You have to do it. Like what? Sounds like it just real good. That guy should become a defense attorney. He's really good at talking and convincing you of things. My sole program is, is look for. That's my sole program. Whenever I get bored in the business, whatever, I, if I press play on something and I'm not excited in the morning to get up to do that workout, if I'm just feeling like I'm rolling with the punches and I'm half-assing a workout and I'm just doing it just to do it and I'm documenting my day four, I know I need to go back to look for because I can get energy behind that. I can get hype behind that and I can launch the crap out of it, even if it's five years old. So figure out what your soulmate program is. What is that program that lifts your soul that no matter what, and I'm not telling you to relaunch anything, but I need you to get in your mindset that if you're not behind a launch, if you're not behind, you need to create one. So with Beachbody, like they work out like on camera. Is that what they do? I would hate that. <laughs> have to be. And this is the biggest thing that I'll say is create a niche down launch. So for me, when I'm talking about lift for, when I'm talking about any program, I'm not talking about like, Oh, and then it comes with a solution and it comes with this, that, and the other, I will niche down. I'm like this program, I grow arms. My goal, my biggest insecurity is my, Oh, I got a lot of insecurities, but one of them is my arms. I really want arm muscles. Like I'm geeking out over getting arm muscles and putting that out on social media is such a fear of mine. I was like, that's what I'm doing to live for. I'm gonna get arm muscles. So I'm not talking about the entire program. I'm not talking about, but guess what I'm doing is tapping into females who are just like me who crave arm muscles, tapping into dudes like my husband who want their arm muscles back and niching down to that and making it fun. And not this another program, another thing, figure out what do you want to capitalize off of this program? Cause people don't buy products. They don't buy programs. They go by the feelings and emotions that you're putting out there. That energy I can pop off live for any day of the week if I just open my mouth and talk about it because this is the hype you're going to get behind it and people are going to believe what I have to say because I'm, I'm clearly not BSing. If I go on and talk about another program that falls flat for me, I will literally be like stagnant in my conversation and it seems forced. You know when I'm hyped about something and my numbers know when I'm hyped about something. So figure out where that is. The next is um, why do you want people to do this with you? It has to be something when you're getting behind your boot camps, you're, you're Simple answer. Girl, this could have been an email, first of all. Um, why do you want people to do this with you? Because that's one of the requirements for ranking up. You have to recruit people. Why do you want them to do that? Why do you want to rank up? Because of money. Money, Mr. Krabs, money. Your, your challenge groups, whatever you call them, your fit gyms, whatever. When you're inviting people to it, why do people want to be in it? Do you want to be in your own? Is there energy in it? Is there excitement in it? Do you believe in it? And the, the biggest thing is you show up the biggest out of everyone. I don't like I had I had challenge groups up the challenge groups where it was just me, myself, and I, but I was showing up having the best dang time of my life. And guess what? All I needed was a couple spark plugs that joined in there and wanted to be part of the energy. I know, and so think to yourself too, what type of participant are you in a challenge group? I'm the type of person that I don't show up. I'm doing all the stuff in the background, but I don't like, I don't comment, I don't engage. If I were a participant in a challenge group, that's me. So I know those are my people. So I'm not offended that my people are not showing up and they're ghosting because that is like queen me. But I'm gonna show up 10 times bigger to maybe show them that it's by showing up, by leaning in, by making yourself noticeable in there, that's that added pressure that you're gonna get even better results. That's added accountability that they need. So think about who you are in your business, who you are in your challenge group. And you need to understand that people that you're bringing in are very similar. And how are you gonna get them out of their bubble? How are you gonna get them excited? Make sure that that energy is there within your challenge group. Again, the products, the programs, they don't sell themselves. You sell them. You sell them by your energy. You sell them. And it's not even necessarily your results. I grew my business. My first two years, I never posted a transformation because I was too ashamed of my own body. Anybody who had signed up back then flat out told me, you just seem obnoxiously happy. And we don't know that side of you. And all of a sudden you see someone be bopping around on social media, really stupidly happy. And that's be bopping. I haven't heard that in so long. I have a feeling she was born in the eighties. Cause that's like, it's like an late eighties, early nineties term be bopping. This is what I, I imagine her just like going around like this. My brain is shaking right now. Stupidly happy. And that's a rarity these days. All of a sudden you're like, I want to do and be a part of whatever they're doing. It doesn't have to be some monster transformation that's going to become successful for you. It's you. It's you, your belief, your passion, and how you're portraying that. Okay, let's keep going. Okay, now we're going to define. Now I want, this is where I want the chat to go crazy. And I'm, I'm challenging all of you. Cause again, my person, I'd be like, I'd be a black box. I'd have, I, I probably wouldn't even have my name on here. So you couldn't call me out. You wouldn't be able to see anything about me on here because I'd be like, don't call on me. So I'm gonna challenge you, especially those of you that are in the back, black box, make sure that you are showing up in the chat and put yourself out there just out of the fear that maybe one of your coaches sees this goal. Okay. One, what, where are we at? Um, 
What is that goal that scares you? What is the goal this month? We're not talking, we're, we're talking like right now, what are you willing to commit to this month? The month of June, walking into summit, because we're all going to summit, walking into summit, what is your goal? And this, we're not playing small. This is that goal that's terrifying for you to put out in the existence. This is like scary, like, oh my God, I don't think it can happen, but it would be really cool if it did. That's the type of goal I want you to drop in there. Okay, let's talk about how weird that is. I, I, I know it's a type of terminology and it's really just their vernacular, their verbiage, which those are two different things, um, in multi-level marketing of do what scares you and your goals should scare you. They should be so big that when you open your eyes at night, you see it sitting on your chest like a sleep paralysis demon. Have you all ever seen one of those? Ooh, don't do it. Is Will Scaly? Oof, that is uh. You know what? We need some more traction in the Reddit, um, the Reddit thread. In my Reddit thread, it's linked down below. If you've ever had a sleep paralysis demon experience, go go leave that on the the thing. Do it, and I'll tell y'all mine. I'm terrifying. Oh, well, that got weird. So, anyways, uh, so anyways, bring out the dancing lobsters. It's just so weird to me that they think that you're goals have to scare you your goals don't have like why why does it scare you like is it intimidating sure but it doesn't scare you why would that scare you i would ranking up scare you are you questioning yourself maybe again intimidating is it something that maybe you don't have a whole lot of confidence in that you can do it by this time okay we'll figure that out and figure out okay is this actually attainable like hitting a hundred thousand subscribers for me isn't scary it's intimidating sometimes but i'm working my ass off to make it happen so like it i don't know it's just why would it scare you why would being successful scare you i would making a lot of money scare you why would accomplishing your goals and your big goals scare you keep your goals attainable and simple and then from there figure out what you have to do every day every week every month every quarter every year to get that shit done case closed court adjourned bring out the dancing lobsters this sucks. I can't even see my coaches to be like, I'm calling you out. Um, okay. So there's your first one. Now I want you to take that. I want you to think to yourself, what does that goal mean financially for you? Literally calculate it. What type of income are you going to make this month? If you hit that, when you hit that goal, when you hit the goal, or if you're like a Julie Boris, when you hit the goal, what is your income going to be when you hit that goal? So like literally tap that out. Let's get some crazy ass numbers going on your biggest months you've ever had in this business are popping off right now. That's the second time this week, like while recording a video, I've heard someone say Julie Voris. Who is that person? Should I look into her? Probably. Um, also, I don't know if y'all can hear it, but it is storming right now. It's like raining real hard and the lightning are playing tonight. So maybe that's a good sign. Typically when it rains, we win. It's like magic. Drop that money down. I can take care of groceries, catching up on bills. Give me numbers. I want numbers. Because this is something you guys got to figure out. Because especially as a new coach, when you're like, I want to hit Success Club 10. And, and then you say, that's going to be $350. I'm like, bro, you're forgetting about the $100 bonus you're going to get for signing up five PCs. There's a lot more money you're forgetting. You're leaving on the table. So figure out how much income that's going to bring you by hitting that goal. Okay. From there, what does this mean rank-wise for your team? So do you need teammates? popping off? Do you need teammates hitting a goal? Is there, is there a goal? Are you trying to go for two star, five star? Well, then you got a bonus attached to this. Figure out what you need as teammates. Do you need emeralds to pop? Where do you need them? Like we got to get really nitty gritty so we can really niche down into exactly what needs to happen to make this happen. Because we are going to have like a slay squad situation at the end of this month when all of a sudden we're like, I don't know what Christina did because you guys got to prove that I gave value. You're like, I don't know what she did, but she popped everybody off. And all of a sudden Beachbody has had the biggest month they've ever had in their business. Like Carl would be so happy. Like he'd be so, let's make, let's make good old Carl happy. Okay. So let's put that money down. Let's put that. Let's make Carl happy. What? That's so weird. No. How about you focus on doing your job and not worried about if the leader of your cult is happy? That man is such an absolute dweeb. Absolutely a dweeb. He's so weird. And they all are just so obsessed with him. If I didn't already say it, he is the super creepy CEO of, of, um, beach body. But yeah, right? Like why why are you tra if, if you make more money, sure, then yeah, he's essentially going to be making more money if the company's doing really well, but like why is that your goal? He doesn't know 90% of these people. He doesn't care about them. Let's make good old Carl happy, okay? So let's put that money down. Let's put that rank down what you need. Um, here's the next one. Where does that put you in Success Club? 
Think of what number that's going to put you in success club. And this is something I started saying to my team. Again, another one of those things you can be like, write that down. Not hitting success club, it won't do anything for your life. Nothing will change. If you don't hit success club, nothing will change in your life. If you hit success club, everything will change. If you hit success club every single month, everything will change in regards to, let's not wrap everything up in success club, but in regards to a lot of things that each body is aligned with as far as rank, as far as growth, as far as income, as far as um, accolades and recognition and earning different things and this, that, and the other, a lot of it wraps around success club. Okay. And that's something that it was one of those that it took pressure off some people to be like taking it and, and switching that mentality of nothing will change. It's totally okay. If you don't hit success club, it's okay. Nothing will change. But what if you did? What if you kept doing it? And what if it kept going? What you could get in a test group, you can get a free ticket to summit. You can get all this, this, that, and the other. And I, I don't even think I can share the numbers, but the thing that motivated me is back in the day, I had tapped into somebody else's training because I didn't have one. And it said, if you hit success code five every single month, I won't say it for all the leaders that are like, don't say it. It was, if you hit success code five for two years, you would be at this income. If you hit success club 10 for two years, you'd be at this income. And I was like, oh, what if I did like 16 or 20? What could I be at? And that was a motivating factor to me to see those tangible things as someone who doesn't understand volume, APV, ATV, TV, PV, EV. I don't know what none of that means. Again, I'm going to show you how to be successful by not knowing how to do anything, but caring and believing in the business. So Okay. Now let's go into who are you sharing your goals with? Now, this is one of those things that you guys are lucky that all of you have an upline of some sort of capacity that you can connect with. Who are you sharing your goals with? Who are you sharing besides I'm here and feeling safe that everyone's dropping and feeling like you're going to flood out. I dare you to, and some of you leaders are going to be like, great, Christina. Thank you. I dare you challenge you triple dog dare you to message your upline coach and say one, you say, this is my goal for this month. What will this mean for the team? Because a lot of us, uh, leaders especially, we don't feel comfortable going and be like, hey, we as a team are trying to hit this. We as a team, have you ever asked your upline coach, hey, what can I do to help the team? We want to be, you, our team wants to be a lead again. What, what could I do? You don't even know that like newer coaches hitting success club, coaches hitting diamond, coaches going on the road to elite, coaches hitting success starters. You don't even know what that means in the grand scheme of your entire team. You don't even know that by hitting those accolades, you earn all of these things and these calls that you get to be on. So one, talk earning a call. Wow. What a privilege. What an absolute just honor to be sitting on a motivational call. How about money? How about money, Mr. Krabs? Talk, plan on putting this out there because you are going to do all the action it takes to actually achieve that because now we know it's possible. Because if you knew some of the crazy stuff that I have jumped in this business just because I was too scared to fail because I put that goal out there and I had to hit it, put that goal out there to your upline coach. Message them, this is what I'm going to do. And hey, P.S., what would this mean for the team? What would this mean for our overall team if I were to hit this goal? Because sometimes that added pressure makes the goal even more fun. Because not only are you helping yourself and helping your downline team, but you're also helping your upline team. I will go quicker. I was promising myself I was going to be done by now. All right, let's look at where your relationship is on social media. Are you just posting just to post? Are you posting to check out those boxes off so you have the tracker filled? So you this, that, and the other, and you don't even rewatch your own stories because they're that boring or that they gave you epilepsy because it's boomerang after boomerang and you're like, but I showed up, right? Where are you with your relationship on social media? Are you feeling like you need those days off? I honor that. Think about the, the accounts that you are attracted to, the accounts that you want to watch and follow all the time. The ones that you, that you don't even, they're not even in your feed. You type their name out because you don't want to miss anything that's going on. What happens if they take a day off? You get a little bit hungrier for their content. It's okay to take a day off. It's okay to breathe. It's okay to reset. And it's okay to build. Um, shows that you know nothing about Instagram. If you are interacting with someone's page constantly and watching their Instagram stories over and over and over again and replying to them and liking their pictures and commenting on their stuff, then you will never not see. It would always be first, essentially. And then also, if you never want to miss something of someone's, you can always put them under, uh, what is it, favorites, I think is what it's called. You can go to favorites and then make sure that they, again, always pop up first because you can sort it by that. And I understand it's going back to chronological order, but yeah, you can do that. You can also turn on notifications for them. I hate any notifications ever, so I will never do that. But for a social media influencer, you sort of don't know how to do that. It's okay to build that belief back into all the content that you're putting out there. But also I'm gonna give you the permission to use social media selfishly. Use it for yourself. Use it to hold yourself accountable. Use it to share the stuff that you love. Use it to connect with the most amazing, badass people that are just like you, that are connected to you, that want to see what you're up to. Use it to have really good conversations. Use it as a space that you selfishly don't want time away from, that you're taking it away just so you can actually be in the moment for something. Use it in a way that you are documenting, that you're putting out the scary stuff to hold yourself accountable. I don't like- Ma'am, what? Use social media for you. Okay, so I'm using it for me. Post on it so much that you have to- like put it down to actually be present somewhere and that you don't want to do that. But also like use it selfishly and post what you want to post and talk to people. But also put out there what's going to attract more people to your business. So what what are we what are we doing? At like absolutely what are we doing? 
What are we doing, girl? I don't like posting three quarters of the stuff I post, but if I don't do it, I won't show up. And I know for myself, again, I, I, I built my business off fear and I built my business off doubt. So if I put something out there, like, do you know how hard it is? I've been in this business for seven years and I cannot pop an arm muscle. I want to put my arm to here or my arm to the side. And I effortlessly have like shoulders where somebody is like, not only like, oh, that's cool. But like, wow, she works out. That's what I'm going for. I, in seven years have not been able to do that. I put that out there. I got to figure out how to do that. So I am showing up and holding myself 10 times more accountable because I put that out there. So make sure you're leveraging social media for exactly what fills your soul. So you want to rewind. That's so weird though. <laughs> Like what about boundaries and privacy and anything like that? So it's it's interesting because like, for instance, a lot of times there's some things here and there that I'll like put my goal out there. Like, for instance, last year it was 50,000 subscribers this year. You know, I wanted to travel more and it's, you know, 100,000 subscribers. Then like y'all, like my people know that last year I wanted to hit it by September. And then this year I want to hit it by September. And it's OK if I don't. If I hit it by the end of the year, that's fine, obviously. But I'm not putting out like these like not putting out like what I'm working on or like, you know, I personally, especially as a creator and as like a so social media person, not putting stuff out there until it's done, you know, because people can get the wrong idea. Like if something doesn't work out and you're just so excited about something in the moment and then it doesn't work out and then they're like, okay, well, you're a liar or like you're flaky or like you don't follow through. And it's like, well, no other, like other things just happen, you know, it's not, it's okay. Um, yeah, so I don't do that personally. I'm not trying to embarrass myself, but it is weird. Like, also, I just like don't want all my business out there. But it's so, it's strange that, like, I understand she like is a workout person, but saying like, I'm putting this out there because like, because I go off of fear and because people think I can't do it and then I'm going to do it. And like, that's what my business is based on and like built on. And it's like, ugh, it's, it's okay that that motivates you. I definitely have like a, like a prove them wrong and that's fine if that motivates you. I definitely have the like, tell me I won't. Tony told me I would not. He s said you won't to a um, to me going skydiving. And I went and I went skydiving literally five minutes later. We were already at the place because he had just done it. <laughs> but I'm so I'm, I'm definitely that type of person. Someone told me I couldn't eat three Baconators in one sitting. I might have like really hurt my booty hole after that. But I did it. So anyways, it's it's just interesting. Like, sure, that can motivate you and you can have like that type of like prove them wrong, like personality and like, oh, that really gets me. But I don't think your entire being and your entire business should be built on that. Like you need to be able to motivate yourself without focusing on people. And this is just my opinion, but without focusing on people not believing in you and not supporting you or telling you that you can't do something. Yeah, it just doesn't seem sustainable. Actually, yeah, that's the word I'm looking for. It doesn't seem sustainable. Well, you want to rewatch your stories. You want to see what you're up to. You're excited to like, oh, I look good in that pose. Oh, look at my hair. I'm here for that. Oh, that was a good, that was a good caption that I wrote there. You want to be more obsessed with your feed than anyone else's. Um, look at your social media. Like even right now, pull up your 12 square and see what type of energy you're putting out. I noticed for a little while, because I'm very sarcastic and that I was doing like a bunch of reels and every single one of my like home screen, it was like, Cause I was like being like a sarcastic tone. I was like, that's the energy of somebody, the first, you got five seconds, not even three seconds to captivate someone's attention when they land on their feet. If I'm making a sarcastic face and everything, who's going to want to see that? They're not going to tap on and, and feel me out anymore. They're just going to go and they're going to judge a book by its cover. Cause that's what we do. Cause we're vain. It's not right, but it's just a culture we're at on social media. So look at your feed. Is it color popping? Is it something crisp? Is it for the love of God, guys, wipe off your screen before you take a picture, right? Like it's dirty. No matter what, it doesn't even matter if you rewiped it off. It's dirty again. So rewipe it right before. So make sure that you're captivating and you're connecting with your audience and you're portraying exactly who who you want to put out there, not who you foresee in the future, but who you want to put out there because that's who you are attracting, right? And what feeling do you want from somebody leaving your account? If somebody's on your account and, and they, they go to the next story and then all of a sudden it's like, ugh, and they tap out, you don't want to be the account people are Xing out of. You want somebody to leave your account feeling a certain way. Are they going to feel hyped? Are they excited? Are they laughing? Are they inspired? Are they motivated? Do they learn something? Are they, are they saving your content? What is that thing that somebody is connecting with on your um, account? All right, less or no, I'm lying. We're gonna we're cruising. Okay, inviting, connecting with people, providing big energy. It used to be like connecting, marketing, inviting. I'm saying connect with people as far as like send good vibes. I tell my team, you don't need to swing out the invite right out the bay. Connect with people, like go give them a good day. Who tells you to have a good day? Who messages you and says, Hey, I hope you have an awesome day? Go drink some water and compliment yourself in the mirror. 
You don't hear that. Do you know how good that is to hear? It's like, oh, thanks. No one's going to be offended by that message unless they are in a really sour mood. And if they are, they need to double down on that good vibe. Send good vibes to people. And then you know what? It's your responsibility to show up big, big energy. Because you know what? When you send that message to someone, the first thing they're going to do is cross check who you are and what you're about. They're going to be like, what's she up to? I'm going to go check her social media. And if your social media is dead zone and play, it's like, oh, I know what she's coming for. No, give them a show. Give them something exciting. Give them something that they are like, oh, what is she doing? I want to be into that. I want to I do whatever that is. So showing that big energy, then you're going to follow up with that invite. Then you're going to, they're going to be feeding into your um, stories. They're going to be feeding into your posts. They're going to be showing up. They're going to be liking and commenting. And then it's an effortless invite. You don't ever want somebody to be like, wait, what are you doing? Whenever anyone asks me like, what are you doing? I'm like, oh, I didn't do a good job sharing. Or they're just trying to be like my type of people and being like, I wasn't paying attention, but I really was stuck in the crap buddy for the last four years, but we're just going to pretend like I wasn't right. Make sure that somebody always has an idea of what you're doing, whether it's a highlight, whether we'll go, we're going past that. I'm not going to go that deep. Okay. Um, creating quality conversations, knowing your audience. And so your audience is you, this is one of those things. I'm not someone that would do a swipe up. I'm not someone that would fill out an application. And that's actually how I get 90% of my people is by doing that. Right. So it doesn't really make sense. So I also know that my actual kind of people and not that any of my teammates that are on here that just did a swipe up, you are my people, you're my people. But I know that my type of people go block all the things. If I'm coming at them and they're not ready yet, I know I got to have quality conversations. I got to get on the phone. I got to speak face to face. I got to do voice memo. I got to give them a personal touch to my conversation. So they know that I'm being real about this and I'm not just trying to get them to sign up for something else. So I also, again, read your audience, read yourself on the way that you enrolled on how were you a swipe up, then your, your following will probably do swipe ups. Are you someone that needed to have in-depth conversations? You can't be annoyed that someone's asking you 500 questions if you were the 500 question person. So read your audience, figure out what they need and serve them accordingly. Um, that's annoying. <laughs> Quality conversations before you invite them. So essentially just have, this like you I mean you can have a quality conversation but it can still like it can still be fake because what is your motive behind it it's just to invite them to this thing it's just to invite them to whatever team huddle or team i don't even know what they call it in this mlm but it's just to invite them to essentially recruit them and that's it we've all gotten the message we've all, it's happened many 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 times they'll like a bunch of your stuff they'll engage for a little bit and then after however long, typically like a day or two or way shorter than that, they'll, you know, reply to your stories and then try to get a conversation going. And then boom, what do you do? What do you do for work? Have you ever thought about monetizing your social media? Yeah, ho bag, I do that already. Thank you, next. Goodbye. Like, please don't talk to me. I mean, now like all of my reels are about how network marketing is a scam. So I don't get as many. I really don't get as many hey girl messages anymore unfortunately i miss them i feel left out but yeah that's that sucks it's the motive what is the motive money money mr crabs it's money am i playing small violins or are these my crab hands money yay transactional relationships serve them accordingly okay team building so we did the whole, this, that's how we're getting challengers, right? We're rolling into, that's how we're building up our boot camp is by connecting big energy and then inviting. How are we getting our team to grow? Because a lot of people, we stay in that challenger mentality and you don't switch into that CEO mentality. So tap into what you're providing or do, wait, what did I write? Tap into what you're providing or do what feels confident to you. Oh, this is why Nikita, superstar diamond. The one, when she popped 15 star, everyone was like, what are you doing? Homegirl didn't have a team page. She didn't even host team calls. She didn't have a team training. She literally put her coaches into a pod and like, okay, what are we hitting success club this month? And then when are you going diamond? That was it. It doesn't have to be that complicated. You don't need to have this incredible training. And if you do, we have it in our back office. You don't need some crazy calls. You don't, all you need is personal interaction. You need to build belief. You need to get people to fall in love with what we do, invite people to join them and then duplicate over and over and over again. Again, I'm not someone that knows how to do any of the back end stuff, but I know that I love what I get to do. And I will talk about it endlessly. And I'll continue to invite because I truly, in my heart of hearts, feel that anyone that says no or quits is dumb. I feel like this is such the most incredible thing of all time. Anyone who says no or quits is dumb. Guys, we're so dumb. We're so dumb. Great. So she's a winner. Just in case, because I feel like she might be a type of person to do this, to, to do this. Just in case she strikes me with a privacy claim, um, I am offering commentary. I am giving my commentary on this video. This video was posted publicly and also sent to me. And also she knew that she was being recorded for said video to be posted. Also, she's a public figure. You can't present yourself as a public figure and then decide you don't wanna be a public figure when you get called out about something that you're doing that's unethical. So there's consequences of being a public figure. Figure? you know, incredible thing of all time. Everyone needs to be doing it. And it's crazy if you're not. And so for me, that's all it takes. It doesn't take fancy systems and fancy things in order to get somebody to sign up and be successful. It takes me believing and talking about it and getting excited about it and sharing about it. So 
do what feels good for you as far as inviting. Um, you are your training. What you're doing now gives the experience, the proof, and the validity to your future team. So if you say it's hard to hit success club, it's hard to hit emerald, it's hard to hit diamond, it's hard to go two star, it's hard to do this, that, and the other, and you take that struggle bus approach all the way through it, you can expect that that's the type of information you're going to parlay to your team, right? You sign somebody up and they're like, I'm sure she said relay, but I, it sounded like she said parlay. Like she just turns into a pirate. Parlay. Anyways, uh, she said struggle bus. It's called setting proper expectations. It's not easy to recruit people. It's not easy to make sales. It's not. But if you have the right tools and you're good at sales, you will, I mean, you'll probably be able to do it. But like, this ain't it, okay? Oh, on the struggle bus. No, I'm setting proper expectations because no, this isn't easy. Sales is not easy. But just because it's not easy, just because it's hard doesn't mean you can't do it. Like, well, how do you hit Emerald? The first thing we do is we have our firsthand experience. Well, this is what I did. And for me, I'll say like, I literally signed up at Wednesday. Like, this is a true story. I signed up on a Wednesday night at like 10 o'clock. I did not want to say I was a Beachbody coach because I was highly embarrassed. And I was like, what do I have to do for you to tell people? And my coach was like, you need to sign up two people. And I was like, game. For my mom, I was like, I, I need your credit card. Told my husband, I need your social. I'll use my credit card. But like, I need you guys to sign up because I don't want to announce that. It was one of those things that for me, figuring out what's your motivating factor, what's going to get you to show up, what's going to make you do things is what's going to take you. So she broke one of the company's rules that you can't sign up people under like their so like the social someone else's social on your card that's frustrating so that's what a lot most beach body coaches do deanna can even tell you she has done a whole video i'm pretty sure about it about how they do that and it's so misleading and it just sucks it really sucks essentially that's like their like ghost account that they'll order stuff under and then it's like building one of their legs and le legs one of their like downlines and it like really helps them and then signing up your mom, you sign up your mom and your husband. So you essentially just cheated to get the the thing, the to rank up to the first thing. You cheated. A little cheater, little cheater, cheater, pumpkin eater. We're moving on. So again, you are your training, thinking to yourself, how are you going to define your pathway in this business to duplicate it for your coaches? Um, right now, okay, after all this, and you type down what your goals were, what the income is going to be, what success club is going to be, all the different things you threw down there. Where's your energy level and belief that you're going to make that happen this month? Between one and 10. I'm just waiting to see numbers. If someone rolls in here with like a four or a seven, I'm going to call you out and put you on the big screen. We're going to have a conversation. 8.2. Who, who gave me a point two? Five, y'all. I'm, I, I'm offended. Y'all should be a 10. This is why. This is what I'm saying. If you're coming at me with anything less than a 10, you already doubted yourself. You gave yourself an expiration of like, I wasn't all into it. I kind of want to. It would be, must be nice. It would be really cool to do, but I'm not willing, which is the big word, to really go after it 10 out of 10. Because I'll tell you, the 10 out of 10s that Someone gave her a five. That sucks. That's why you like should not do that when you're leading a training or anything like that. Like, sit, don't, don't ask those types of questions. Because then that just like makes everyone else feel shitty too. And they're like, yeah, this does suck. 10 out of 10s that actually believe that they're a 10 and not just saying it because they don't want me to actually say their name out loud. The 10 out of 10s are going to do it. Bulletproof. It's locked and loaded. Pitbull into their goal is happening, right? People that if you're anything under 10 or if you're just faking it until you make it into a 10, that's, that's totally cool. I totally appreciate that vibe and it fed, fed my soul. Thank you. But if you are sitting there in a less than a 10, figure out what it's going to take to get you to a 10. What do you have to do to make yourself willing to the 10? Okay. I think it has to not be a scam, right? Like that's what it has to be for you to be like a 10 all in is for this not to be a scam. That's not going to happen. There's that. Now answer with that mentality, with what you're willing to do, with your goal, with all the things that you have in your head of like, okay, she gave me permission to do X, Y, Z. She gave me permission to do this the way I don't need to be a Stepford coach doing it the way that everybody told me to do or what all the training told me to do. I'm gonna do it my way. I'm gonna do it big and I'm gonna make it even bigger, right? That's the mentality that you have. Are you the coach you didn't roll with? With your new mentality that we have been served tonight, are you the coach you didn't roll with? Because I had my gut check myself. I'm like, when's the last time I did an Emerald call? When's the last time I did a one-on-one -on -one mentor call? When's the last time I did this and the other? I'm like, I can't be complaining that I'm not having massive growth. I'm not doing the things in order to do it, right? That was a gut check I had this morning, which made me want to do this call even more. Then I'm like, <sighs> what can happen though when we all decide all at once and all of a sudden corporate's like, what the hell happened? We guys like things popping off like crazy. Oh, Christina, they just like, they let her open her mouth, unwind her and let, let her just go. And then this is what happens, right? Okay, so we are at 10, 10. Are you the coach you'd want on your team? Think right now, based on your goals, based on what you're saying, based on what you hit up your, your coach with, what your goal is, based on how you're showing up in your team page from here on out, all the different things. Are you the coach that you want on your team? If there is five to 20 of you on your team, what does your team look like? Because that could be fun. Like, think about that, right? Oh, I, now I want to like read the chat forever. And I'm proud, like no one can sign off. I don't even know how many people are on here, but I've seen that it's like one out of 13 pages the whole time. So if it drops 12, I'm going to be her, her feelings hurt. Um, but I'm ending. We're almost done. Can I sign you all up? Nope.
Oh, that was Christina. Um, okay, I'm gonna move on to the last thing and then we'll be done. All right, I want you guys for one second to take the moment to write down in the chat. This is important for all of us and this is an incredible tool for all of you to use. Um, since you started, since you signed up, how has your life changed? Emotionally, physically, financially, like wherever you want it to go, I want you to drop in the chat. This is why, because this, oh, what's her name? Lauren already knows she's got her phone out. This is why. I want you guys to take screenshot after screenshot or video scroll, all the different things. This is content for you to use in your stories over and over and over again. You guys are going to have like 10 pages worth of content to be able to use of how people's life has changed since they started. And you know what? We're all the same team. We're all team. Nothing like using someone else's success to try to sell your scam. I can't stand that shit. Like it's it's like how the Amway people would always be like, oh, I know I work with this couple and, and they're very successful. It's always some couple, isn't it? It's always some couple that's successful. It's never that specific person or, oh, well, my mentor has my mentor has this. Okay, but do you? Do you, girl? Oh, well, this part, she's the top income earner. Are you? We started. And you know what? We're all the same team. We're all team Beachbody. We're all a part of this together. This is something that then you can use in your stories and as social proof of, oh my gosh, got off this call. This is how everyone's life changed in my crew. I'm so freaking excited. This is how my team's changed since they started. And you can use this over and over and over again because you're going to have tons of pages for this. So use this for the next month. The month of June is freaking popping for all of us. This is one of those things that you can now utilize as a tool to be able to show social proof. It's not really proof though, is it? Like I could say all day long, I made $40,000 last month and swear that it's true, but it's not true. Or also just taking screenshots of like what people said, like they don't know, they don't know these people. So are you just going to be posting other people's like what the business has done for them? Yeah. You know what else does that for them? Getting a job. Yeah. And not being in a pyramid scheme. Frustrating. I'll tell you. I'll tell you what. It's so frustrating. Sometimes I wish my mic wasn't in frame, but I don't know like where to put it. Like I could put it up here, but then it's like, it's too, I feel like it's, it's too far away. And then I feel like you can hear Wiggum and I don't want you to hear Wiggum. I just want you to hear me. Of what is possible when you commit, especially if you have a smaller team, this is killer for you to be able to show exactly what's possible when someone starts. When you stop thinking about something, when you stop correlating and um, what, what do I keep saying? Stop um, relating to the depressing meme and we're going to become the inspirational quote. That's where we're going. We're done playing small. We're done saying life is hard. It is hard. And it's hard re relative to everyone, right? But we have this incredible option that one, we get to lean in. One, we get to be a part of something. One, we get to be able to literally dictate whatever you want out of this business. Every single person, you'll never hear from any- We get to lean in. We get to be a part of something. Please put me out of my misery. Jesus. It's just so strange because it's like, we get to lean in. We get to do this. And it's like, do the people who were in, who were like on this team, do they not have any other friends? Do they not have a family? Pro I mean, I, I know not everyone does. I know not everyone has a good support system or a good, you know, friend group they can lean into or anything like that. And I know that's why most people get suckered into MLMs is because they don't have those things and those people to tell them not to do it or that do fulfill them so that they don't go looking for this. But that's just so gross. Stop saying lean in. The whole like lean in thing is supposed to be like about women and, you know, leaning into each other and helping each other and empowering each other. But if you are financially motivated to fib, to twist the truth, to try to recruit to someone into an opportunity where they have less than a 1% chance of being successful and actually achieving what you are selling them, that is not empowering, that is not lifting up, that's scamming and lying and bamboozling and you hoodwinked them. That's not okay. And I have so many, I used to get this all the time, now I don't, but I used to get so many comments when I first started saying things like, when real women support women, why are you putting down women and em empower, like there's a special place in hell for women who put down women. What about murderers? What about female serial killers? Am I not? Are they, should they not? Should justice not be served because they're female? No. Should you not be called out for lying and being a shitty person because you're a female? No. Are you allowed to go and do whatever you want just because what you identify as? No, not at all. I don't care what you identify as. Behavior is behavior. And there is a special place in hell, but, or whatever underworld you believe in, but not for people who don't uplift other women or put women down. It's for people who use that phrase against people who are actually just trying to hold people accountable and use that to justify their shitty actions and try to manipulate others. Bing, bang, boom. Every single person, you'll never hear from any coach that's like, oh yeah, it was so easy. Like I had this like 
three year hiatus. I had nothing going on. And so I just blew up this business and I had no responsibilities. And I just did this. Like I could give you some really crappy stories in the midst of my highest highs in this business. And my life was my lowest lows. But for me, I won't get emotional, but this house will make me emotional. But for me, this business was my breath of fresh air in my darkest times. And this business is what I leaned into versus leaned out of because this is what felt made me feel alive. This is what made me feel validated. This is what made me feel important. This is what made me feel like people actually matter. Like I would get a comment from someone saying I was inspirational. I'm like, I don't know if anyone told me I was inspirational my entire existence. All of a sudden I had a place that I mattered. All of a sudden I was surrounded by people virtually that didn't think I was crazy, that didn't think I was weird, that didn't think I was anything because I was bebopping around on social media. They wanted to be a part of that. Say bebopping one more time. That's really sad. That's very, that that's very, very sad. But again, this is a great example of, especially during lockdowns and the pandemic and all that in 2020, and then even into 2021, people, oh, we're in 2022. I always think we're in 2021 and we're not. But both of those, I mean, people think they feel they feel lonely. You know, you're not with your family. You can't be with your friends. And maybe, you know, you drift from people and people who already, you know, aren't doing that great and need that interaction, but then can't have it. Like that's, that's rough. That is rough. So you find yourself in this and then it becomes everything to you. And that's what they do. I'm pretty sure I actually wrote it down here. Um, Yeah, it said, I, I have a place where I mattered. And I said, that's so sad. That's depressing. But again, it's a great example of where it, this, the MLM, the culture of it, the group, it becomes everything to you. And they do that on purpose. Maybe not knowingly, I know, but the culture does it on purpose so that if you were to even think of leaving, you'd be terrified because you're like, well, I don't have my friends. I don't have my safe place. I don't have like, you know, all these people telling me how amazing I am. Like I don't maybe have like that, like power grab. I don't have that money. Like I won't have all these things if I leave the MLM. So let me just stay in, even if it's unethical or even if I'm losing money or even if, you know, it's toxic or even if I'm, you know, lying and scamming people, I have to stay in because without it, I will have nothing. And that is such a cult tactic, the us versus them. And you have everything here. And this is way better than what's out there when it's not. It's actually like, a, and we talk about this with MLMs that target uh, younger women and men, but younger women even more so than Beachbody because they typically go after like people who are a little older. But with Monate and Arbonne and other MLMs, they'll go after people who have never had a normal job, have never had a nine to five, an office job, a corporate, actual corporate job with benefits and, you know, maybe work from home or good pay and, you know, a 401k, things like that. They have never done that. They've never experienced it, yet they're on they're on Instagram talking about how evil it is, how horrible it is, how you only get a three cent raise every year. And it's like, that's not how that works. Like, that's not how that works at all. And it's just so crazy that they say stuff like that. Like, I know, um, like, I know a couple people this year that got like, they work at the same employer and they all got like five to $10,000 raises. Like, that's amazing. Just for like their merit raise for like being there longer and longer and longer. But when you don't, when you haven't experienced that, like at all, at all, you know nothing about it. And it's different from, you know, us showing these facts and these, you know, debunking what they're talking about and the figures and the income disclosure statements and all that stuff. It's different than that because they, they put all this shit out there, right? And we can see like, okay, that's wrong. That's wrong. That's wrong. That's manipulative, blah, blah. But you can't say like, oh, well, I would never be able to do this at, at you know, a nine to five and I wouldn't be able to have that freedom. I saw, I saw a Monate girl the other day on Instagram. She was on her Instagram stories and she was like on her bed or something like at I guess like they're like vacation home or something. And she did a video of her computer and she's like on her bed, on her laptop. And she like turned around and like looked out the window at like a tree or something. And she's like, how is this work? And it took everything in me not to reply and be like, that's working from home. Like that's work, that's working from home. A lot of people like work in their bed or work on the couch when they're working remotely. It's not, it's not the one solution. Your multi-level marketing company is not your one solution. There are many solutions to the problem that they are solving. All of a sudden I had people that got me. All of a sudden that any, I could get in any conversation, this you'll find at Summit, I can get in any conversation with any single one of you and we could be exactly polar opposites. I call my team with the most infectious heart, the garbage team of Beachbody in the fact that you see a lot of teams, they all look like each other, walk like each other, talk like each other. My team, you have no idea what you're getting. You would have no, you'd be like, that's Christina's team rolling up a bunch of people who make no sense to be together. And I love it. I love it because I don't have anything necessarily. I call my team garbage. You could have come up with a better name for that. You called them garbage because you never know what you're going to get. Why wouldn't you call them a box of chocolates then? Call them garbage. 
I call my team the New Jersey landfill because they're, they're all so different. That's why. Connecting me other than our passion and the belief. And that's enough to carry on a conversation. Want more for you. I don't want you to quit. I don't want you to struggle. I don't want you to doubt yourself. I don't want you to slow down. I want you to get fired up. I want you to believe in yourself. I want you to be 10 out of 10. F yeah, I'm in energy that in the month of June is going to be your biggest financial, emotional, physical rank success club, all the things like you're, we don't need anything more than the belief in this business to have a conversation. And that's, what's going to carry you on and be successful. Belief is not enough. Belief is not enough. Proper expectations, having a structured schedule, consistency, hard work, knowing your network, knowing your market, listening to analytics, engaging with your market and or like the algorithm or whatever, diversifying yourself, not just doing one little thing. Like I don't just do YouTube. I have Instagram as well on the podcast and I don't just do one type of commentary content. I do, you know, other types as well. And then luck, that's success, right? It's not just belief. So I believe that I'm going to hit 100,000 subscribers by September and that's just going to be enough. No, I need to post four videos every week until then. That's what I have to do. And then I'm going to take a week off (laughs) and take a nap or something because good God. Yeah, that's no. The most toxic positivity, mindset, belief, not helpful information at all. And you're a top leader in this company? Ugh. Your name, your coach is gonna get so annoyed because she doesn't have enough verbiage to write what a freaking rock star you are on the team page because you're showing up so damn big for yourself, your team, and everybody else. So, all right. I'm done. Hopefully I'm 15 minutes over, which we could have called out, but thank you guys so much for being on here. I am sweating like crazy. I appreciate you guys. I'm so excited and let's blow shit up. Are we all in? We're all in for this. Did everyone get their screenshots? Did everyone get their, all the things that they need? Okay. Hopefully we did good. I'm not even going to scroll through. I'm just hoping everyone's like smiling and having fun and enjoying life, but we are doing big things. I'm so freaking excited. Let's, oh wait, someone said boomerang gang. Are we all boomer? That, uh, y'all, I couldn't even zoom this into anything. You think I'm going to take 13 screenshots of things going on? Like oh, who dropped off? We just hit 12. Let's find her. Who is it? They probably, mm-mm. not okay. That's good. All right. I love you guys. Thank you guys for coming on here. And Angie, do I have to do anything else? No. Okay. You're Thank good. You. That was amazing. Yay. You killed it. Thank you. Bye. All right, bye guys. Did she say that she had 13 pages of like people? So there were like 13 like newbies, I think is what she was saying in in that thing. I'm pretty sure that's what she meant. Um, well, that was weird and unfortunate. I do want to do more calls about other MLMs. So please feel free to send me them. I would love to react to them. Do you know how to send me something? Do you know? I know, I'll tell you. It's actually always in the description box, the directions. So you upload to your Google Drive. Everyone has one. Upload to Google Drive, not mine. I have a lot of people who are like, where is your Google Drive? I'm like, that's not how it works. Upload it to your Google Drive and then share access with me um, with my email, ccsuarezmakeup at gmail.com. It's my YouTube email address. Um, so go ahead and do that. And yeah, I had a few people send me MLM horror story things. I I don't do those anymore. So feel free to send those over to Deanna Mims or Hannah Alonzo. They both still do those. So feel free to do that. I do not do those. I can hardly read out loud. So I'm not doing that. <laughs> but I hope that y'all have an amazing rest of your day. I hope that you that you go to therapy. I hope you go to therapy. I think therapy is important and you should go to it. And I hope you enjoy all of the content that I've been posting and that I will continue to post. Uh, okay, bye.